Right. Uh, okay, we have a very few topics to finish and wrap up. And then I'll move to the next part. Basically, we discuss about our first lesson and uh, we have discussed about uh, these uh, sectors, basically usage of ICT and uh, emergence of ICT. So what, what are the new technologies, uh, the things introduced in ICT, we discuss about that. Uh, and so I think we have to classify hardware and software. Uh, so that also I have done uh, last day, right? So classification of hardware and software, basically we can classify hardware into six groups, input, output, uh, memory, storage, processing, and communication. Then, so have I completed software classification? Yes or no? No, sir. No, right. Okay, that uh, I think I have to do. And what else? Oh, this copyright uh, plagiarism, these concepts, I have to just discuss about these concepts. But anyway, so this is going with the next, right? So let's uh, move to the fundamental lesson. Okay, this part we discuss uh, hardware classification. How can we classify hardware? Uh, so computer system, basically computer system class can be classified into three groups, uh, hardware, the tangible, intangible, and the related data structures, as well as the documentation. So that is software and the people who are using that is liveware. And then we learn about uh, the basic hardware devices. We didn't discuss much about this uh, uh, processor, registers, DRAM and all, but still we have discussed about the basic hardware devices. So these things we will discuss more in our next lesson. And so then, so related to software, we have a uh, few categories, right? Related to software, we have few categories. So that is, uh, Okay, so classification of this is actually a two period lesson. This basically you need to learn, learn about the basics of it. So that is only two period lesson. So hardware, as we as we know, we have input, output, uh, processing, uh, memory, which is temporary, and storage, which is permanent and communication, so devices. So we learn about that. Then when it comes to input, output, processing, input, output, processing, memory, storage, and communication. These are the hardware groups. And software, we can categorize into three basic categories, that is system software, which is actually device uh, software work with. Hardware components. Directly, this software works with hardware component directly. So we call them system software and the application software these are the software I work with people us or software which provides user space or software with addresses user specific needs So example, you can say uh, traffic design, web browsing. 
So these are user related tasks. So here, for an example, you can say operating systems, utilities. and uh, program translator software or program translators. So you know the machine computer works with the machine language, you no know, software need to be translated. So program translators, operating systems, which is basic to the computer and utilities, these are working with. And graphic designing, web browsing. So these are applications and you have another category activity that is coming under system software sometimes, but it is also called firmware. So this is actually special software programs embedded into chips at the manufacturing time. Please write down these things by the manufacturers. special software programs embedded in the chips at the manufacturing time by the manufacturers. So these are called firmware. So example in, you can say software in monitor, projector, washing machine, AC. So these are air conditioners. So these are firmware. Special software which are embedded, embedded till again. So we can't change it. We can't change it. Basically, we can access that. We can change the settings, but we can't change the software. So it is embedded. And it is done by the manufacturer. These are the basic categories of software. In addition to that, we have uh, another categories like based on cost. So we can categorize as free software. And some are shareware, shareware means half away free or trial software and paid software, or you can say commercial software. So that is also a category. And if you, uh, these are some other classifications, right? So this is not there in the first lesson, but so will be need, will be useful in the future lessons. And based on the code rights, you can say copywriter, copyleft. Anyone can copy or anyone. So need some or oh, need permission to copy. Copyrighted, it needs permission. Copyleft doesn't need permission. Anyone can copy. Free means free of charge. Shareware or trial software, it is partially free. Partially free for maybe 30 days free, seven days free, or some features are free, partially free. Commercial means you have to pay and buy. And based on code availability, you can categorize as open source, yeah, you can see the code. Anyone can see the code. Anyone can see the recipe exam. So think that. So there is a food where people can see the recipe. Those are called, those are not called open source food, but here in software, if code is accessible, anyone can see the code. Anyone can see how it is created. So that is called open source. So there are some sort of post process. So these are some other categories. Based on usage, based on cost, based on code rights, code availability. So these are some other categories where you can categorize the software. So if anything unclear, please ask. Please write down this first. And if anything unclear, please ask. Next Right. That is about the software classification and human operators we learn. So what are the type of uh, people you are using live web basically. We have software engineers, engineering software, hardware, network engineers, working with hardware and networks. 
an application assistant or normal people who are working in the application and multimedia authoring people who do video editing. So these people are called multimedia authors, video editing, audio editing, composing. So those are the, those are some categories of users. But so ICT has like, it, it is like a tree. There are a lot of, lot of opportunities available in ICT. So you can see ICT jobs. So there are a lot, right? There are a lot. So not just if you know a little bit about ICT, still you can find uh, occupation or job. And if you don't know much about uh, computing, you can start this basic job. And if you know very well, then you have some specialized specific jobs. So these are, uh, so you can just go through this and see. There are different, different categories uh, related to ICDs. These are some basic right, education, web development, develop multimedia, database, project consultants, game developers, game assistant, game players, so network engineers, software engineers. So these are some, and you can see there are multiple levels of the job. So you can, it's a big tree. So basically there are closer to 200 plus opportunities, 200 plus job categories, right? 200 plus job categories are there. You can just do a search and find about that. And find, uh, actually we, I have just uh, like said in the previous lesson about different stages of data handling. So when we discuss about these, uh, input devices basically input devices are used for data capturing here so that is data capturing data gathering and output devices is used for data output or data presentation processing devices are used for data processing then memory devices used for data representation it is not here but data storage can be taken and for communication data, communication devices are used. So here one more thing, what is data validation? Validation, general meaning of validation. What is the general meaning of validation? Yes. Something is valid, valid means? Okay, let's say you are, uh, you are, so if somebody is telling that when you face a level examination your examination id or examination registration number is not valid means not valid means it is not acceptable right valid means it is acceptable it is issued maybe you validity you need to check with some other thing so examination registration number, you have to check the validity with the department of examination. If it is registered with department of examination, you can say it's valid, it's valid, it's acceptable, it's a valid number, right? So, okay, one, one more thing. So, somebody is asking, in, uh, please enter a number, right, in a program, in a software, somebody is asking, please enter a number, then, you, you are going to enter like this. You are going to, I, I'll show you this practically with the Python lesson. We have that lesson in future. Okay, just inputting is not enough. That is why the validation is there. Uh, let's take a new file here and I'm going to input two numbers. So number one, I'm going to input enter a number so number two again i'm going to input and enter in the message is enter a number i'm going to input again my message is again input enter a number here and here also both are enter a numbers likewise I'm just entering two numbers and then I'm going to add this numbers total equal number one plus number two. I'm going to add and print the total. It's a very simple program. So let's see 
I have no validation. Here I'm taking input, I'm doing processing and output. Input, gathering, processing and output. And storage also. Storage is basically I'm storing first input in number one. I'm storing the second input in number two. Then I'm storing total in the is number one plus number two in the total. So these are variables. Variables means the places that we can use to store these things. It can store a change in value. Simply it can store a change in value. So if anything unclear, you can ask, right? So are you clear on this program? This is not to teach you Python, but just give you just to give you an idea about these things, what is happening in the computer. Are you clear on this? So can you explain it again? Yes. Number one is basically a variable which can be used to store the value given for number one. So it is like a bucket. Number one. It's like a bucket. It's like a mug where you can put some content. The content is going to be entered by the user. This content actually it's number one content. We don't know what is number one. It's going to be entered by the user. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Number two is another variable. So that is also another placeholder. And to this placeholder also, the number two placeholder, another value will be placed. And there's another variable called total that is also a placeholder. To that placeholder, to that variable, addition of this and this will be placed. And addition is a process. Here you have input, storage, input, storage, storage, and process. Clear? Yes, sir. Then the output. Print is output, right? Uh, actually, you have data gathering, data processing, output, and storage, but no validation here. So I just want to explain validation. That's why I took this example. No validation here. So I'm, I'm going to run the program after saving this file save as i'm going to save the program first let's save and run the program when i run this program it's asking me enter a number i'm entering 56 enter another number i'm entering 34 so the here it says the answer is 5634. Is it correct or wrong? It's correct. Yeah, it is adding, but it's not mathematically adding, right? So if I expected mathematical output, 56 plus 34, if I expect, uh, expected 90, it's not giving 90 as the answer, right? Yes. Right. Then, then I'm, I'm adding one more step. I'm telling I need integer number. Now, actually, I'm trying to validate this. Um, put in integer. Integer means a number, whole number, right? Now, I'm going to run this again. And again, I'm, I'm going to enter two numbers, 67 and some other number. Now, it's adding the number. So, my answer is valid now. Now, my answer is valid. A mathem mathematical addition has done. So, when, once I try this validation and all, so I can, so if somebody give a number like this, somebody give a number like 10, uh, it says invalid. See here, invalid. Why invalid? 10 is a number, no? 10 is a number. Why it is invalid then? Yes? You have to type it as numbers. Like yes, I, I have to type as it as a number. I have to type it as a number. So that is the simple reason why this is invalid. I didn't type this as a number. Therefore, it's invalid. It is not acceptable. So I can further validate this. I can further validate this. So that is basically, I can um, try this. I can expect
I can try. Okay, let's let's give a try. Just a try. Oh, I have a cat check too. So once I try, I have to catch the error using catch. Actually, uh, or you can say accept. So try catch or basically accept. So I, I know that this can happen or cannot happen. So then I can just give try to do this and accept. Accept. Um, maybe you can say print. Something went wrong. Actually, so rather than doing like this, I would like to first I'm going to take the input and the second thing is I'm trying to uh, actually get that I'm trying to convert that to int in one equal uh, I'm trying to convert this to a number then I can accept and I can tell something went wrong. So this is better. Okay, not I'm not going to teach you Python here. Again, I'm repeating. I just want to tell you the validation can be done by the program or we can, manu or we can also try to validate that uh, using our coding skills. Again, the same thing. I'm going to input the number. So this is not going to give any error, but the, uh, the thing is, I'm trying to convert that to and two is equal to number two. I'm trying to convert and again, something went wrong. And finally, I'm going to add uh, in one plus in two, in one plus in two and print the total. That also I have to try and catch actually. So let's try. Okay, enter number one. I'm, I'm giving one. So it says something wrong. Then two, something wrong. And uh, here you can see it also give an error, name error in one and two, not defined. So here you can give, initially you can give in one equals zero and two equals zero because in case of some error in one and two, both are zero initially. So in case of an error, it will display zero. Then my program is fully supporting this operation. If I enter the correct numbers, it will add. So no issue. So then uh, if I try to do something miserable, hello and hi, it says zero, something went wrong. So it's not giving any errors. So normally we don't like to see this program programmatic errors in the stream, right? On stream errors, we don't like to see them. So let's say you are going to withdraw money from ATM. If ATM is giving something like this, it is, is it uh, like understandable by general users? Can they understand what is there? Let's say ATM machine is giving this kind of error, the highlighted one. Can a general user understand what is going on? No. No. Therefore, we don't give that errors. So as programmers in future, we will try to handle this as programmers. And this is how it is done. So when user try to manipulate or user try to destroy the system or user try to get uh, something unacceptable, the validation should be there to check these input data. So that is why the validation is there. Another practical scenario I would like to show this. Uh, I found this in uh, some website. Uh, this is okay, this is a website that I found because I'm doing photography. I'm into this. So what I found is when I type, okay, let's say um, I'm just typing your name. I'm just typing your name, uh, Lino Ocha. I hope uh, they are, yes, cannot find it. Ocha. So you don't have any pictures uploaded to this site because you are not doing modeling. So let's say, uh, but there is issue in this site that is basically the basic validation is not done. So I can manipulate this. I can manipulate this. Let's say 
I'm just typing in Oja. And let's say, so your your image is not there. Let's say, let's let's take some image. Let's say this is you, but I know this is not you. Let's say this is you, and I'm I'm just copying the image um, address, and I can uh, since there is error, I can just manipulate it and I can tell. Um, And since there are no validations, I can just try to manipulate this and see. Okay, you can see. Uh, finally, no, just started modeling, so you can see. So it's manipulated. It's manipulated, and then what I can do is I can uh, send the manipulated URL, but don't worry, so it's not about you. And then the manipulated one I can uh, send using a shortened URL. Shortening system. <laughs> Shorten. And if I send this to you, so you can just click on the link and see what's going on. Can you click on the link and see? This is the link that I have sent. What will happen? Can you go to that link? You can see this, right? Can you? Hello. Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you see this image, this kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. But the thing is, uh, actually, was it there in the website? Originally, was it there in the website? No, it's like no. just a name. It's, it, it's basically so. Uh, if you know HTML, if you learn HTML, have you learned HTML in all levels? Um, I didn't. Uh, I think you know. You are doing it now, right? Yeah. In, yeah, right. Okay. So that is the thing. Basically, uh, so if somebody knows HTML, they can manipulate. Actually, they can present which something which is not there as. Uh, actually, uh, so this is called XSS, XML, uh, sorry, XSS, cross-site scripting, cross-site scripting. This is called, that is cross-site scripting because somebody can manipulate because the validation is not there. So input should be sanitized. Inputs, user input, you can't trust. User inputs need to be sanitized, but this website has not sanitized user input. Therefore, a person can manipulate it and present something else which they are not displaying. So that is dangerous. That is not good. So it is better than that. I saw image, but somebody can attach a JavaScript. Somebody can attach a virus to this and manipulate. So that dangerous is there. So likewise, so this is about uh, the particular data validation part. Now I think you know why validation is needed. Without validation, so it can damage the system. And uh, data actually gathering, different uh, data gathering methods are there. So basically, we are using automatic data gathering methods in computing. But uh, earlier days, so think about your attendance and all, manual data validation was done. And uh, so data uh, gathering was done. And different automatic tools are there. OMR is one of the main tool uh, that is called optical mark reader optical mark reader so basically when you mark the answers in a level paper you have to color the uh, basically you have to color something like this this is a sample right you have to color um, so this is all levels in a levels you will be given a sheet like this and basically you have to color the answer so these are all right, you can see the colored answers. So this is how you mark MCQ, multiple choice questions. And so that is read by OMR machine. Actually, in my year, when I was doing A-levels in, uh, actually, I did biology. At that time, there was a common error in OMR machine. And that has completely messed up the results. So in the recorrection, 
So I got uh, altered result in the recorrection due to this machine error. OMR is the machine which is going to check your marking, uh, check your answers. That's why they are telling, don't, uh, don't write answers, don't mark two answers. Or don't, don't mark one and erase the uh, erase another. Don't mark and erase. Because OMR machine might confuse. It might give wrong result when you color and when you remove, when you tip X, when you erase. So that is not, sometimes that will be read as an incorrect answer. Also, you have to color this uh, circle fully. That is how the OMR machine read this answer straight. So that is optical mark reader. Optical character recognition, in the other hand, I think you know about Google Lens. So that is doing optical character recognition. If I, if you want, I can show you one thing using this Google Lens. Let me quickly share my screen. Just give me one second, I'm just trying. Okay, uh, here actually I have joined using my mobile phone and I'm trying to share my uh, screen as well. And you can see, I think, uh, can you see my screen? Can you see it? Yes, sir. I'm just going to lens and this is Google lens. I have something here, an object. I'm trying to read uh, that object and you can see here solar charge controller, something like this and I, I need to read the text. Why well, if I can translate this you can see I'm Check in translation. This is English to Tamil translation, actually. But if I want, I can translate the same to Sinha. Can you see what has happened? So it has translated the text in that box to Sinhala, right? That is Google Lens. That is Google Lens. Okay, so that is real time translation. That is called OCR. OCR or optical character recognition. It has recognized the characters, then has done the translation. Actually, it was as image. Ne? It was there as image because I have enabled my camera. So it was there as an image. So therefore, because I have just enabled my camera button. Right, even though I have enabled my camera, so it tried to read the image and understand the text. That is called OCR, optical character recognition. And in the check, check reading, MICR, magnetic ink character reader, MICR is used. MICR is magnetic ink character recognition or character reader, which is used to read the checks. When you deposit check using this check machines, this MICR code is read by the, this is actually check machine. When you read in these checks, this MICR character code is, these codes are read. And then the card reader, magnetic stripe reader, you know, the ATM card backside, you have magnetic reader, stripe reader, MSR, right? Magnetic stripe reader. Or magnetic strip reader that is actually to read the back side of ATM card. So it uses here to scan the magnetic strip. Barcode reader, sensors, loggers, these are actually tools used for automatic data capturing. Data validation, type check. We already see that. What is type check? Data type, integer or text. It's checking. 
presence check. Presence check means am I submitting or not submitting? So when I try to log in some website by entering maybe empty username, empty password. If uh, okay, let's let's try uh, yesterday work site donates to Delhi, and I'm uh, accessing this time. They had one thing here. Yeah, okay. So let's move to that. And if I try to log in, it says value is required. Value is required. That is, this is the second thing. That is presence check whether at they are that is they are not. It's checking the presence. So let's give something like this. Mm. I'm copying and pasting the same. So here it says uh, username or password. You know, actually, this is uh, something uh, used for blind SQL injection. So that was, I, I was just trying to check whether they have validated that, right? Not to attack, right? Sometimes otherwise it will be misrepresented as I try to attack. No, I just, I was just trying to, uh, I was just trying to uh, give some error use some error actually this is called error based sql injections just trying to manipulate so sometimes people are trying to do that right uh, they are trying to use a incorrect usernames password and trying to use a disabled please contact uh, the administrators likewise the user account is there so we have discovered that so likewise people can check the presence check brain check brain check so when you enter a password sometimes it says you must enter at least eight characters, at least eight characters. Data type, integer, likewise, whether you have entered valid data. Presence check whether data is available or not. Range check whether you have used correct range. So for an example, for telephone number, you can do a range check. A valid number should have at least uh, 10 digits. So that can be captured or identified by the range check. Okay. Today, data input also. So there are some methods, data inputs, direct or remote input. Direct input means you just deal with the system. You go in front of the system and enter it. For an example, if you withdraw money from ATM, that is direct. Direct input, direct output. You just withdraw. Remote. So you are not going to closer. You are going to internet banking. That means you are not going to uh, the physical bank or physical ATM, but you are going to transfer money. That is removed. Internet be, be, banking is basically removed. Online or offline? Online transaction. If you want to transaction, uh, tra if you want to transfer money, that time itself, you can do that online. Online examination, you have to answer that time itself. Offline, you can download and do that. Leisurely. No need to do real time. No need to do that the same time. Offline examination, basically you can download and answer the question and submit in any time. That is called offline. That is not online exam. So these are there. Yeah. And data processing also, there are some terminologies. Batch real time. Batch processing means you pro process as a group. You wait. For an example, think about a private bus. A private bus will be there in uh, private bus will stop in bus stop and wait until the passengers come and load. They will not go without the passengers. That is batch processing. They will wait until a set of passengers. When the bus is full, they will start driving. So that is basically batch processing. They will wait until a bunch or a set of people or oh, set of passengers loaded. Set taka kena ka inno. We ena ka indala tama dasa kya? That is batch processing. But tray wheel taxis. That is example for real time. When you uh, pick the hire, when you book the hire, so it will start. That is real time. Batch means 
you have to wait until a set of data input input so your interest is calculated as a batch processing at the end but there are some um, systems so like uh, these uh, bitcoins like cryptocurrencies they have real time calculation real time up and downs uh, then the output also so that can be direct presentation or storing for the further processing so direct presentation is you are presenting now just or you can record it and present it later so these are some methods of and also the storage storage also has the local or remote storage local storage means you are saving in your computer that is local but if you are saving in cloud like gmail google cloud google drive these are remote storages google drive will give you free remote storage but local storage means you keep in your computer so what is the advantage of storing things remotely cloud storage what are, can you tell me one advantage of cloud storage yes can you tell me one advantage of cloud storage storing data remotely or cloud you can access it from anywhere can you hear me yes sir you can access it from anywhere let's say you have saved your senior mobile into your cloud cloud storage then maybe another day or you are changing your mobile phone but still you can access that data when you log into the account since it is there in the cloud samsung cloud with the google cloud i cloud when you put that cloud account what is happening so you can erase all the data in local storage that doesn't matter you can format your phone you can change your phone still your data is available to you but disadvantages disadvantages are also there somebody can hack the security issues can be there right if somebody hack they can also get the information right so those are the things and short time storage and long time storage we learned memory is short time and secondary storage is a long time okay usages of ict we have discussed already in different fields it can be used actually a uh, few more terms to be discussed so that is uh, this phishing piracy plagiarism and licensing right so other things are basically so you know a lot of uh, usages are there in ict but there are uh, issues also these issues so when you learn these terms you can learn about issues so i'll explain the term by explaining the terms so you can by referring to the terms you can learn about these issues confidentiality that is issue number 1 i'm not going to give any note but you can watch the video again and write down this confidentiality means we have different levels of information privacy basically so some information i would like i i don't like to disclose is to everyone so think about that i'm doing a classes i don't want to disclose my family information to my students that is my privacy i need those maybe let's say uh, a insurance company they have insurance company will keep will collect all the data about all the health related data about or oh, let's say hospitals hospitals are collecting health related data about people what happen if they disclose this information to insurance company or oh, what happen insurance company disclose this information to some other party so that is not good you need your health information to be personal private so you don't want to disclose it to the society and other people unless you wish to dis un unless you decide to do that if you decide to do that yes you can do but the confidentiality should be assured confidentiality but like think about again another very good example password and username so as a, as a teacher if i am asking your facebook username and password there is a problem even i am the teacher you should not disclose that to me because that is confidential that is your data so why should i ask that from you for no reason 
So a lot of, uh, so young child, yeah, so not young children actually, a lot of young generation people, teenagers, and also uh, the employees, when they have relationships, when uh, there is a couple, let's say a girl and boy, so mostly I have seen that the boy is asking use, uh, username and password of the girl's account. And girl is asking the password and username of the boy's Facebook account, but that is confidential. So they, there should be some level of confidentiality. Everything should not be disclosed. There is a problem. And personally, when these kind of things happens to me, I, I, I really deny. I don't want to do that. So why? So not because uh, so there should be trust between both parties. So that is one thing. Then the second thing is what happened. So I'm using my social accounts for doing various things. What happened if accidentally or somehow, some for some reason, if my confidentiality is again disclosed by the other party? Means, okay, I know about uh, the security issues. A password can be captured. A username can be captured. Uh, maybe it is possible to hijack sessions. And if I give my username and password to, let's say, my fiancé or somebody, so then if she's using that in a public Wi-Fi area, in a public network, or in some other place, and if she forgot to log in, log out, and if she for, uh, forgot to use the basic uh, security measurements, that is actually putting my account into trouble. I can't blame her for that. So therefore, there, there should be a confidentiality level. The social media account, should not this should not be disclosed even within the family so that should not happen right within the family also that should not happen unless you are you are having a guardian and uh, the guardian has a responsibility to protect the children so unless in that situation just that situation so that is my that might be a challenge to the privacy but the thing is the confidentiality should be secure in such a way where everyone should respect the other's privacy privacy means confidential information. So one social issue, I have already arised. What is the social issue? So people are disclosing this confidential information. So that is a social issue. So I have seen in the Facebook and some other media, people are publishing pictures of their, maybe their ex-relationship, their girl or boy. So maybe messages, they're just publishing or telephone numbers. So that is a social issue, violating that, right? And also, uh, hacking is a social issue where people are people trying to steal your information, confidential information, usernames, password. That is also a social issue, right? Then stealing and phishing, stealing, phishing, stealing. So stealing, as the name implies, you know what is stealing. So this confidential information can be taken away, can be hacked, right? can be obtained. So that is stealing. Phishing means it's kind of a trap. Some websites, some users, hackers, some hackers, they put traps. These traps, I have seen recently in some profile, but I couldn't remember one of my friend's account. I have seen that. So she was uh, sent a message saying, okay, uh, your picture is there. And uh, your picture is uploaded to this website by somebody. So when she link, click the link, it's navigating to a website and the, that website is asking her username and password. That is a phishing attempt, trying to get that confidential information. Even we did that in our university time. We didn't know that was like, that was a, uh, that much of dangerous thing, but we didn't understand that. Uh, ethical side when we were there in the university, but we didn't learn because we didn't learn that for our that in our schools. So we didn't have that idea. So actually, we were two friends, uh, myself and another one. Actually, we have created a small, a small software. That software is basically killing. That software is killing or uh, wiping the desktop stream and. It is showing login screen again when you so let's say you type username and password. Let's see Windows username password type current uh, Windows let's say XP login in this XP. So they, at that time actually XP right that was the operating system mostly used in places. Okay, there is a place to type username and password like this. 
username and password. Actually, what we have done, we disappeared this stream and we have, we actually created a duplicate stream looks like this and prompted that to the users. Then what has happened, our friends, basically they are like in our batch, we had around 120 students. So all of them had personal login, but not personal logins actually, university logins. All of them had university logins. It's like this. This is, let's say, this is the university server. And they were typing username and password to log into the university server. Actually, we have, after they typed this, we have killed the stream. We didn't display the desktop. Instead of that, they are getting another stream like this. But that was phishing. Now we know that is phishing. Actually, not now. After that, we understood that after some time. Then what they were doing, they were typing their username and password again because they cannot see the desktop. Desktop take a pain at the end. I make a username, make a password, take a type. It's going to a location. Actually, this software was saving this username credentials. This software was saving these credentials in a text file in a server, in a cloud environment. It's not cloud actually, in a network server. A software can save a username, password. Actually, Believe me, we have taken closer to 92 passwords and usernames at that time. Actually, when somebody forget the username, they have to give a letter to the administrator, written letter to the administrator saying that I forgot that. Then the administrator will call, first, first of all, the administrator will call them. And after that, they will, he will reset the password. But when our friends discovered that we have hacked into their account and got their usernames and passwords, they come to us and tell, can you remember that? Do you have that in your uh, database? So they're asking like that. So we didn't do that for the intention of hacking their accounts. We didn't, uh, we just do, uh, did that for the fun. We had like just to collect their username and password just for gossip, just to know what, what was their username and password. But that is anyway, phishing. That is phishing. Phishing means trapping, setting a trap and get their details. Piracy is another thing. Piracy or the pirated copies. Pirated copies in Sinhala we call horror copies. In the movies, I think you have seen this T na Sialum Himikam Avirini. Mema got the meme mema cinema pate langatabaganima wikinima antarjaleta muda harima upload kirima when in the sapura tahana mehama karna katira daduan karno kitavia. That is to protect the piracy. Piracy. Piracy means basically protecting your legitimate software from illegitimate use, from copying. If it is a software, if it is a movie, you have to restrict that movie from copying without permission. That is illegitimate. Copying movies, copying this pirated software, pirated movies, these are everywhere. Right? No one is paying so if they, since there are pirated software, most of the users, they are not paying for Windows. They are buying pirated. If they are not paying and buying, they are getting the pirated copy. But that is illegal. Some countries, that, that is punishable offense. Some countries, it is a punishable offense. Using a black copies or illegal copies is a punishable offense. But in Sri Lanka, also piracy is treated as an illegal thing, but mostly it is not. So for the this uh, European software or this uh, USA-based software like Windows. So some, yes, some are actually, since now Microsoft, they are in Sri Lanka also, they are having uh, sent uh, actually a uh, distributive branch or actually Sri Lankan center. They're checking on this, but the thing is, it is not that much enforced, but the law is there. Copyright, intellectual property, that is basically another social issue. These all, all of these are social issues, economical issues, actually ethical issues. Ethically, you can't fish, you can't steal. That is illegal as well. Legally, that is a problem. Piracy is basically, uh, it's an economical problem because the original seller cannot sell that. And it is ethical problem and legal problem. So that is it. Copyright intellectual pro properties. Copyright means any content created with your intellectual, with your intelligence, is treated as an intellectual property. Anything created 
anything created or anything created using your knowledge is considered as intellectual. A song, maybe uh, an art, a drawing, a photo, these are intellectual. You own it. So it is illegal to copy them. It is illegal to copy and use them. But people are doing that. A lot of people are doing that. So there is a law. Legally, it is illegal. But so you can see uh, in the lot of places, people are doing that. So I can show you some examples. So when you browse from my name, the Sony Langena, I said that I'm in photography. Therefore, you can find some photographs taken by me uh, of some famous people. Actually, they are famous now, but I have taken this before they become famous. So this is actually one of my photo shoots. I think you know the girl. Uh, she's uh, Hiroshi Vasundara. She was acting uh, in different, uh, different, uh, different store, uh, like dramas, movies, and. But the thing is, actually, these these things are uh, used. Right, you can see different websites are republishing this, but some are erasing this. Uh, here, this this one actually they have uh, slightly it was there. So my copyright I have mentioned. Here you can see uh, copyright Zia photography by the Sunilanjan. Here again the Sunilanjan Zia photography copyright as you can see, and like here actually so it is better here you can see the Michelle Ilhara she is also actor, actress but she is. Like mentioning the image courtesy, image courtesy when she uploads the pictures, mentioning the image courtesy there. But here you can see some are uh, here also the image courtesy is mentioned, right? But some people they are not mentioning the courtesy; they are just taking as their own without any permission, right? So that is the nature. So that is also that is illegal. Plagiarism, plagiarism, or plagiarism. Plagiarism is basically copying and pasting things from the internet. Okay, let's say you are given a task to write assignment for paper. If you are given a task to write a paper assignment, if you are copying the things from internet without acknowledging the original author, that is called plagiarism. There are software programs to detect plagiarism. Right? Plagiarism is ethical issue, but uh, normally it's not legal, but it's an ethical issue and it is considered it is considered as a problem. Why? Because when plagiarized, when you know we when you don't mention that it, you can't do this in the universities, basically, when you are submitting assignments and all, plagiarism is highly discouraged. You will get zero marks if you plagiarize, if you copy from someone. You will get zero marks. Right, so this plagiarism is a plagiarism or copying content from others is a problem. License, unlicensed software, we already discussed that. Licensed software means the, you have right to use that software. You have license, you have purchased the license. Actually, software is free, but for license, you have to pay. There are some free license also, but most of the software, like Microsoft, Adobe Photoshop, this software, License you have to purchase. License means right to use. It's a key basically, a license key. So sometimes you are getting a message says this Windows is not genuine. The reason is, the reason for getting this stream or reason for getting this is, you don't have the license to use that. Right? You don't have proper license to, here yeah, Windows is not genuine. Maybe you are a victim of, so it, it might say you are a victim of uh, here you are a victim of software. Uh, what is that? So I cannot see it clearly. You are a victim of software plagiarism, not plagiarism. Software um, that is here. Yeah. You may be a victim of software counterfeiting. Counterfeiting means you are not using the software. You are, you are using the software without the license. That is illegal. So, therefore, need to purchase a license. So, unlicensed software. So, you can use that as a trial. For a trial period, you can use not forever. Right? 
Okay, so those are the things I think we have discussed the basic topics, everything. If I miss anything, please tell me, then I can recover that, I'll go through the syllabus again. <coughs> Actually, I have discussed for not just for the lesson number one, some stuff in the lesson number two also I have already discussed. Uh, one more thing here, I covered the social problem, social issues. I said hacking, privacy, uh, phishing, uh, confidential information disclosure, copyright violations. These are some social issues. Economically, there are issues by ICT. Hacking can bankrupt a company or uh, this uh, maybe misreputation. It can damage the reputation of the company or if this intellectually theft or the stealing intellect or uh, maybe breaking into system viruses can economically damage environmentally the thing is like digital wastage e-wastage is damaging environment you know use machines like uh, because these these machines they are having chemicals they are having substances where it can damage our kidneys heart and also the nature natural systems so that is environmentally damaging you know, or harmful to use them actually destroy it. without recycling if it is disclosed to the if it is put into the nature that is damaging ethically we learn about the copyright issues plagiarism issues those are ethical things legally phishing hacking these are illegal a violating of copyright, unlicensed copies, software counterfeiting, these are illegal things. Privacy, we learn about that. We have confidential private information. Everyone has right. And digital divide is something that the knowledgeable people, actually they try to override the people without knowledge. For an example, let's say you don't know much about internet. I'm asking. Uh, so you don't do you know how to log in Facebook? So you say yes, but I cannot uh, remember the password username. Then okay, I I reset you. Can you give me your email? All right, here this is I have reset. Now I'm keeping your password and username with me. So that is a result of digital divide because you don't know about IT, and I'm using that. I'm misusing that, and I'm trying to gain advantage over that. Digital divide is that. The society is divided into two groups who know IT and who don't know IT. Actually, who don't know IT will become victims right, of this. That is digital divide. So therefore, we need to digitally bridge them. To digitally bridge them, we need to empower them with the knowledge. Digital bridging can be done by empowering them, actually giving them knowledge. I hope uh, I have finished everything. I know this is not easy. Within three hours, I had to cover everything, right? So actually I did the theory lesson. I wanted to do a revision, but the thing is like, you didn't have a big idea about that. I decided to do the theory class and finish this. That's why I, it took three days. The next day, we will be into this, the lesson number two. And we will be discussing about this one name and architecture I said about the registers, memories and all. So this will take three days to finish, right? Okay, I'll keep that to the next day. So do you have any questions? Um, sir, is privacy and piracy both terms are related? No. So piracy is basically using illegal copies. Privacy means your confidential information. It's about your confidential information, privacy. I need private things. I don't want these things to know by the public. I need this to know by no this to be uh, communicated. I want this to be communicated to my family, but not beyond that. That is privacy. Piracy is pirated copies, illegal copies, right? So that is piracy. Okay. Clear on that? Yes, sir. Right. Shall we wind up then? If you don't have any other questions. Okay, sir. Okay. Then good night. See you all next day. And uh, please go through the lesson number two and come. So then, 
So if possible, let's keep the things that you know and only focus on things that you don't know. So that will save your time and my time both. Therefore, please go through the... I think you have the syllabus, right? With you. Do you? No, sir. But if you can download, right? You can simply go to A level ICT syllabus, English medium, and you can just browse it and you can download from the IT guru. NI.LK is a very good source. You can download from National Institute of Education. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, right. sir. So please download, go through that, and only highlight me the topics that you don't know. Exactly, if you don't have the idea, so that I can give more priority to them. I'll discuss the others as well, but I can give more priority to those things. Okay, let's stop okay. then. Good night. Okay, thank you, sir. Good night.